Hello? Are we connected? Are you connected, man? You want to be connected to the presence of the Lord, not to your presence. We need a disconnect from us. Yes. Oh, yes, because every, behind every, every area of false connection, there is a familiar spirit and a spirit of pride. It loves to promote itself with false knowledge. Oh, glory. But we are entering a time and season right now where God is not only shaking, but he's exposing. He's bringing us through trials, tribulations, burnings, so that we can come out like gold. Amen? Amen? Amen. Refined. He wants to know who he can trust and who he can't. Amen. Glory. 2 Corinthians 5, please. Is everybody blessed? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Second Corinthians 5 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Second Corinthians 5 and verse 1 through 8. Let's speak it. For we know that if our earthly house, this tent is destroyed, we have a building from God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavenlies. For this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation from which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, not because we want to be unclothed, but further clothed, that mortality may be swallowed up by life. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, the creator, who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee to bring us through this operation. So we are always confident knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by Sight, and remember, faith is your connection to his presence. For we are confident, yes, well, please, rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Powerful statement. He said, there's something that we earnestly desire, and it is to be clothed with our habitation from heaven. That is called eternal place or eternal reality. Everyone say eternal reality. So we walk by faith, which is the connection to his presence, which draws us into his reality, not our own. Has everybody got it? The Holy Spirit is always drawing in us into the reality of God, the eternal reality. Or he's drawing us out of ours. Does everybody understand? Tonight's teaching is called Penetrating Reality. It's a training session. God is trying to get us to a place where we penetrate reality to enter eternal reality. Penetrating reality. Has everybody got it? You know, I mean, you can look around. This is a reality, isn't it? But there's another realm of reality. In Genesis 3. So you and I desire to be clothed with the eternal reality. But the enemy comes and brings everything that he can do to prevent you from penetrating reality. So do you enter true reality, eternal reality. Genesis chapter 3. Hallelujah. Verse, one, uh, verse we're going to go right to verse 6. Everybody there? It says, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate and partook. And she also gave to her husband and he partook. Amen? Then what happened? 
Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were what? Naked. Something happened. They became naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. Now, the garden is a place of no dimensional barriers. There were no dimensional barriers in the garden. In fact, they were eternal, they were eternal beings in there. The angels were in there. In fact, uh, Lucifer and the fallen angels were servants to uh, Adam. They got to see them. They walked with God. They saw God. So the garden was a place of no dimensional barriers, a training place of eternal reality. And what was it? It was a training place of eternal reality. When I committed a rebellious act against the will of the Creator, see, so many people use God as just God. They don't realize that He's the one that created them. And we have to get beyond this point of just God. He made me and you. And he can kill me and you. He can destroy me and you. So there's a place where there should be respect and honor because the creator who made you, you're accountable for the, what he created. And when they committed a rebellious act against the will of the creator, they lost their glory. And they were driven out of the eternal reality into a temporary reality. And, a, and then God placed a cherubim with a flaming sword to protect any re-entering or enter penetrating back to the original reality. He said, no, you will not access this place again. In fact, in verse uh, 22, this is one of the judgments. And the Lord God said, behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. And now lest he put his hand out and take also the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden to till the ground from which he was taken. And he drove out the man and placed the cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which is turning every way to guard the way of the tree of life. No one had access to that reality again. Nobody. Does everybody get this? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Oh, hallelujah. Penetrating reality. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. In verse 7. Is everybody okay? <sighs> Let's speak it. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. For we are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always caring about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who, who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke, we also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. 
For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are not seen are what? Eternal. One of the things that happened is the glory of the body was replaced by a fleshly body. That's what happened from the garden. Amen. They lost the glory body. It was an eternal body. It was a glorified body. They lost that. That's why they realized they were naked. And so now the body of flesh is still, <laughs> because now we are with a body of flesh as a newborn again spirit within us, we desire to be clothed back with that glory again. That's what we're waiting for as a glorified body. Still desiring to be clothed with immortality as in the garden. But the born again new spirit as offsprings of the creator desire and have the ability of penetrating the reality of the temporary realm to press through into the original reality, uh, reality through, with the Spirit of God. He's able to draw you through. Does everybody understand that? See, you see things differently. You hear things differently. Everything is different. That's called walking in the Spirit. That's called what? Walking in the Spirit. So you and I are walking according not to the things that are temporary or the things that we see, but the things that are eternal, the things that we don't see. But in true reality, you do see. Amen? So you are penetrating through reality and connecting into the original reality. And that's where you are sons and daughters. Is everybody with me? There is a process of this, isn't there? Amen. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Our biggest battle is distractions. That's distractions. The enemy distracts. That's his job. He loves to distract. One of the things he loves to distract us with is anything. Amen. The other thing is everything. Amen. So it's anything or everything, one or the other. He will try to distract you. And what he tries to do is he tries to distract you so your eyes are on you instead of him. And then you can't penetrate reality. And we go into woes as measies. Second, or First Corinthians two nine. <clears throat> Again, that's why you know, people become addicts and uh, addicted to pornography and all kinds of other things, because they're actually desiring to be clothed with immortality. They're looking for home. And the enemy brings counterfeit. In verse 9, is everybody there? Let's speak it. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who what? Who love him. So they've not seen, they've not heard, they can't hear, not in, uh, nor do they grab hold of what is going to be imparted in them. Is everybody with me? So it's delivered by the Spirit of God, not by your carnal understanding. Because the world doesn't get this. They can't grab hold of this. In fact, it's not even granted for them to know this. That's why Jesus said it's been granted to me and you to know the mysteries of God. One of the mysteries of God is getting connected to the presence of God in the area of penetrating through reality to the original reality. Where you are changed. And when you begin to focus on these areas, I'm telling you, God will bring deliverance to you. Because you want to push out and remove everything that interferes with you connecting with home. You want to throw it out. 
I don't want anything to do with it. Take some things you want to throw yourself out. Oh, especially pride. Pride is a killer. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go on, verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. The what things of God? Deep. Now, where are the deep things of God? They're in the original reality. So what do you understand that? What do you think God was trying to teach Adam and Eve? He was giving them the deep things of him. But the servant distracted. And they lost it. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things which have been given, free, that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, or what the Holy Spirit but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Because there's a lot of spiritual things. Amen. There's even a lot of spiritual things in the temporary reality. Amen? Amen. But there isn't true spiritual things. Because they're temporary. Even the spiritual things in a temporary reality are temporary. But the things that are in the original reality that we penetrate through to get to, those are eternal. It says, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Your carnal arena cannot get this. It won't get it. For they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. I'm sorry, say that again. He who is spiritual judges all things. Glory. How can you judge all things? Not from this realm. Only from that realm. See, if this were religious spirits interfere and familiar spirits interfere, they say, well, you can't judge. I just judge you right there. Your fruit stink. You just told me I can't judge, so I know your doctrine is incorrect. Hello? We are fruit inspectors, aren't we? Amen. Oh, glory. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by who? No one, only by who? God. For... Who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the what? The mind of Christ. Only those filled with the Holy Spirit are led by the Spirit, able to penetrate real, the real, what we might call the reality wall, to penetrate into the original reality. And what he uses, you and I, in the area is the mind of Christ. Christ looking for Christ. Jesus Christ. Looking for Jesus. That's why he says that your mind must be renewed. Because the carnal mind is going to disagree with all of this stuff. It is going to be content in this realm. It's not even look to be dressed. It doesn't even realize that they are naked. And who you naked before? God. <laughs> there is no reality in that arena that they are naked before God. That he sees all, knows all. And sees what's coming. Because they're living in the temporary realm. Attached to the temporary realm. That's why we got to sever all the time. Especially emotional attachments in this realm. You and I are not to love anything in this realm. Does everybody get it? That's why he says, anyone who loves anything more than me <laughs> can't be my disciple. And the disciple is one who follows who follows? He said, if you love your wife, your husband, your children, and anything else in this realm more than me, you can't have access to me. Amen. The only place you'll have access is an imagination. But true access won't be there. 
because he calls those idols. Amen? Amen. Acts 17. Again, there was something that the Holy Spirit brought to me last time we were together. And, and one of the things he said, he said, many people have the right words, but the wrong presence. They got the right words, but the wrong presence. Acts chapter 17 and verse 22. Let's speak it. And Paul stood in the midst of Areopagus and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. For as I was passing through the, and considering the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown God. Therefore, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I want to proclaim to you. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands, nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives all life, breath, and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined their what? Pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings, so that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grow for him <laughs> or find him, though he is not far from each of us. Why? Because the original reality is but a breath away. Amen. Now here's the kicker. Are you ready for this? Verse 28. For in him we do what? We live, now come back again, for in him, in him, in him, in him, we live, move, and have our being. In him, we live, move, and have our being. As also some of your poets have said, for we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by our or man's devising, man's devising. Truly, these times of stupidity or ignorance, God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to what? Repent, turn from those things, put it under the blood. So you can repent all you want, but if you don't turn, it ain't gone. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance to this to all, raising him from the dead. Raising him from the dead. Again, in him we live, move, and have our being as his offsprings. And we also have access to the deep things of God and the mysteries of God in the original reality. And how we get there is through worship. Amen. How we get there is through denying ourselves. Jesus gave us the formula. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. That is for everything. The problem is denying oneself. Because all distractions bring you involved in it. Amen. It's always bringing us involved. No matter what it may be. It's trying to remove our focus. And be distracted. That's why trials and tribulations come. One of the things about trials and tribulations is to expose your enemy. Not to distract you. So that you can see what's going on and move it out of the way and drive it. Why? Because your focus and my focus is continuously penetrating reality to the original home. That's our desire. That's what we are created for. In Psalm 42. 
Psalm 42, verse 1 through 8. Oh, glory. Let's speak it. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O oh God. Why? Because he's thirsty. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? What? He wanted to go through what? Reality to home, original. My tears have been my food day and night. While they continue to say to me, where is your God? When I remember these things, I pour out my soul within me. For I used to go with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise. With the multitude that kept a pilgrim feast. Why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him for the, the help of his continence or his presence. His presence. O oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill of Mazar, Deep calls on to deep at the noise of your waterfalls. Deep call. In other words, home, the original reality, is calling on you. Deep calls on to deep. And it cannot connect with anyone not willing to go deep. And by the Spirit of God is who brings me in you deep. He says, all your waves and billows have gone over me. That's glory. <laughs> The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. And in the night, his song shall be with me. A prayer to the God of my life. Of my life. Deep calls unto the deep. The soulish arena of life interferes and blocks penetrate to pen penetrating reality. It blocks. It blocks us. Deep is always calling unto deep. But that soulish arena of life interferes and blocks us from penetrating into the true reality and becoming one with him. That's his desire. Why? Because what happens is if you do not see what he sees, then you're not there. We're still living a temporary realm, temporary reality, temporary life. When you and I are supposed to be living an eternal life even right now. So our desires are to be from home, not from here. So when it comes from home, does everybody get it? When a desire comes from the Holy Spirit imparted in you, it is always to exalt Jesus and expand the kingdom. Never to promote yourself. Amen? Does everybody get this? Oh, glory. Galatians 5. Galatians 5, and verse 16. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Glory. And verse 7. Is everybody okay? Come on, lift your hands to heaven and get a drink so you can get more of this. Lord, fill us, dress us, and possess us. Oh, hallelujah. Fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us, fill us. Fill us to our overflowing and one with you, Papa. Bring us, bring us to that place that we may penetrate this reality into one witness with you where you are before us. In Jesus' name. Galatians 5.16. Oh, no, wait a minute. Is that where I said to go? Okay, 5.16. Praise God. I say then, do what? Walk in the Spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. 
Wow. Now remember, flesh came by the fall of a rebellious act to the Creator. So if you live according to the flesh, you're going to die. Why? Because you live a life of rebellion towards the Creator. Yes. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh for the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh and these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish or that you desire from the old man. But if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law of death and sin. Amen. Now, so we're to walk, live in the spirit. Living in the Spirit is another reality. It's not a temporary reality. Okay, so he talks about works of the flesh. These works of the flesh has re replaced the body that was removed from the garden. Amen? Remember, there, there was, they had a glorified body. It was glory. It was eternal. When they got removed from the garden and driven out, they got a body of flesh. Now, these are the works of the flesh. For, uh, now, the works of the flesh are what? Evident, which are. Now, these things, because they are the works of the flesh, cannot allow you into the original reality. Flesh cannot go there at all. That's why it's spirit to spirit that goes there. But if you're associating with the flesh, that prevents your spirit from going there. Now, the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, which is also associated with drugs, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and anything that's associated or like this, of which I tell you before, and just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, they will not access the original reality. Now, here's the fruits of the Spirit, which is what? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, control over self. It's called self-control. It's control over your flesh. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ have crucified the what? Flesh with its passions that love sin in the presence of evil and desires. And why do they live according to that way? Why did you and I live according to that way? Because of the flesh. Because at one time, there was a glorified body and it was replaced with a body of flesh. And because the serpent deceived Eve and it promoted the flesh which was a rebellious act against the creator they lost it lost it all for a pleasure think about that I, you know it still blows me away how many times I would shoot dope smoke dope whatever it was and took a chance of going to hell every time, never knowing when I was going to die and go to hell. Knowing, though, that I would not make it home. I knew I wouldn't make it home. I prayed out all the time, God, deliver me. Help me. Help me. For years. Well, he kept me alive, thank God. <laughs> And then delivered me. But I think I've been at hell and back a few times already. Amen. Or I put somebody else through hell. <laughs> right, hon? <laughs> or more than one through hell. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 25. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. And let us not become conceited, provoking one another or envying one another. That will prevent us from pen penetrating the reality. Amen? 
Okay, walk, live in the spirit is living in another reality. The works of the flesh replace the body from the glory body, which blocks the entrance to the eternal realm or reality. Amen? Amen. But it imprisons us in a temporary reality we call the matrix. Man, you, uh, if that, people haven't seen that flick yet, they need to see that flick because that, that's a reality and it's a reality we live in right now. Oh, yes. We're to be immersed in the life of God, not self. We are to be immersed in the life of God and not self. <laughs> His life is freedom. Not management. It's freedom. <laughs> His life, when you're immersed in His life, it's joy. There's peace. There's blessings. There's righteousness. There's zeal for the house of God. <laughs> you are lovers of His presence. And we are servants to His purpose. Everything comes to an end. This is a reality that we carry except for your relationship with Him. Not saying that can't come to an end if you choose it. And Matthew 7. The world is ruled by deception. Amen? This realm is ruled by deception. God is always trying to make an escape for me and you every day, every move, every motion, everything that you and I do, every decision, he's trying to make a way of escape for us. So we do not get in, snagged in distraction. Amen? <clears throat> Matthew 7, 7. Let's speak it, please. Is everybody there? Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Oh, what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for fish, will give him a serpent. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. What is he taught? This is the law of sowing and reaping. Do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Amen. Now, this is powerful. He says, ask. Those are petitions. And what are you petitioning is access. Amen. You're petitioning what? Access. He says, seek. That means grope, hunt, chase, and worship for after him. And then he says, knock. You knock because you're at the door. <laughs> You are entering. You are knocking. What are you knocking on? You're also knocking on God's heart. And what he's going to do, he's going to allow you access. The door is at the original reality. By penetrating through reality, now I want you to know something. He talks about giving, you, giving bread. If somebody asks for bread, he won't give them a stone, right? Bread is known as the word of God. The word of God in this arena is breadcrumbs. Everyone say breadcrumbs. <laughs> they are breadcrumbs to the reality, the original reality. The bread is breadcrumbs to the original reality. Why? Because it's the word of God. The word of God should always bring you to the original reality. So you can penetrate the temporary reality. Amen? Woohoo! Fish is healthy, isn't it? <laughs> it, is, it? Things that are good for you. And is it good for you to desire the original reality? Yes. Yes. 
And what God does is he brings you through deliverance in these processes. Why? Deliverance of demonic influence? He rescues us from that law of sowing and reaping. Amen? And it's either he's going to either grant you access or deny it. Does everybody get it? It's like going before the king. I don't know if you've ever seen any movies about going before the king. The king stretches out his scepter and says, you can approach. If the scepter is not stretched out, you can't approach. If you do, they kill you. Didn't Jesus tell everyone? He said, look at the, the wedding's going on. Who's this dude with the, not the correct garments? Because those are not my garments. Those are somebody else's garments. And he just thought he can come in another way. And Jesus said, sorry, out. Cast him out. Out into outer darkness. Oh, glory. Sowing and reaping. What you sow is what you reap. reap. That will prevent you from accessing if you are sowing to the flesh. Amen. If you're sowing to the spirit, you're the process of access is granted. That's Galatians chapter 6. Or we just read that, didn't we? Oh, no, we didn't. We read 5. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Galatians 6, we're going to read this. Sowing and reaping. Galatians 6, 7. No. Yeah, 7. Is everybody there? What does it say? Do not be what? Do not be what? And... The temporary realm was ruled by what? Deception. He knows if he can get you to sow in the flesh, you can't have access. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, he's going to reap. For he who sows to himself. <laughs> he who sows to who? Himself, which is called flesh. He will reap what? Corruption. Well, corruption, is there corruption in the true reality, the, the original reality? Not anymore. It's all been cast out. But he who sows to the Spirit, well, the Spirit reap what? Everlasting life. So let us not grow weary while we are in this process of penetrating reality. For in due season, we will have access. We will reap if we do not lose heart. Oh, praise God. And I'm going to close at Romans 8. Simple teaching. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 and verse 12, I think. Yes, it looks very good. <laughs> 8, 12. Is everybody okay? Is there reality? Is there revelation? That's why we must reach the master's level, which is the third level, and learn how to... Master your own death. Amen? In verse 12, let's speak it. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. That's what, he, that's what G, the Lord told him, right? Man, if you commit sin in this, in this reality, you're going to die. And they were removed. And death came. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. 
Does everybody see the arena of the exchange of the body now? From the glorified, glorious body to a body of flesh. Because only flesh can maintain it in this reality, which is temporary. Amen? It cannot access the original reality. Only your new created spirit man can. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, what? Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, and if heirs, then joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I consider that that suffering of this present time and this temporary reality are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed to us when we enter the original reality. Hmm? For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. So all God's creation that is corrupted right now because of the fall is waiting for me and you to be turned from corruption to holiness, to righteousness. It can't be done until you and I are changed completely. But in the meantime, we've been granted access until that day we get a new body. Oh, yes. Verse 21. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's we'll start at verse 20. For creation was subjected to fertility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God or the offsprings of the creator. For we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. Not only that, we who also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves, what? Grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption and redemption of our body, that glorified body. Because you want to be, you want to put on immortality. You may not understand that you want to, but you do. <laughs> you do. That's why you're looking for temporary pleasures. <laughs> Because you're actually looking for your new body to be connected to the original reality that you and I came from. Verse 24. For we were saved in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? For if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with what? perseverance likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we do not know what we ought should pray as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us how does he make intercession for us praying in tongues with groanings which cannot be uttered or what we call understood hmm now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are called according to what? His purpose. His purpose. Penetrating reality. We fight we reject sin. We overcome temptation. We, it's our focus to stay filled with the Spirit of God because without being immersed in the presence of God, you can't do this. You can't do it. It's impossible. You and I must be connected to the presence of God at all, at all costs. Like I said, a lot of people can speak the right thing but carry the wrong presence. And you can tell by the fruits. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's go deeper. We want to go deeper in our lives. Deep is still calling on to deep. Jesus is still calling on to us to become deeper. 
Amen. Father, we are honored and blessed with your word. Lord, let this reality and impartation be imparted in us and that seed that's been imparted in us tonight grow and bear fruit for your glory. Help us, Lord, to be removed, removed from all areas of bondages and entanglements that the only thing we would be bound to is your presence. Bring deliverance and freedom to your people and help us to be loose from all entanglements of deception, fear, and all delusion in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory. Amen.